Greetings. This is a video all about the moment of inertia. We have a hollow square cross section. Someone has built this out of four pieces of lumber. Then they have nailed it together as shown. Nails are a little bit oversized in case you feel like those don't look quite realistic and might split the wood. You're right, they're just a little bit uh, too big. Diameter's a little too big, but that's okay. And um, we're going to neglect the nails as we do our moment of inertia calculation. And we're going to do this calculation twice. So we're going to use an additive method first and a subtractive method second. Turn down the volume on the image, add another layer. For the additive method, I'm going to make four pieces. Get my rectangle tool. So there's going to be piece one piece two, piece three, and piece four. So I'm going to do one and two for the two long vertical pieces, and then three and four, like so. All right, and we know that our parallel axis theorem says that the moment of inertia about a centroidal axis. We'll just do this one. We'll make this the centroidal x axis. Moment of inertia about x is equal to the summation of the moments of inertia of each piece about its own centroidal axis parallel to x plus the summation of the areas times the square Square of the distances. So each area times the distance between the parallel axes. That is how that is all going to work. Okay. My moment. I think what I'm going to do here actually, sometimes I'd like to use a tabular view for these type of calculations. This one I think I'm going to do just a long equation. And so I know that my moment of inertia for shape one about its own axis, right? So its axis is this one right there. And that's gonna be exactly the same as number two. So to include that twice, I'm gonna put a two in front of that. That is just telling me quantity the moment of inertia and do kind of a similar thing with the moment of inertia of three and four. So both of those, you're going to get the same amount of moment of inertia about its own centroidal axes. And so I'm just going to put a two in front of that one as well. Okay, and now we're into our area times distance terms. And my distance term for number one is a zero, D1 equals zero because the centroid of the component lies on the x axis of the composite shape. Whenever this happens, this is a shortcut for you. Whenever this happens, this is a shortcut. So shapes one and two have centroids that lie on that line. Therefore, their distance terms are zero. And so I can neglect a1, d1 squared and a2, d2 squared, but we are going to need my d3. That's going to go from here to here. That measurement we'll call d3. We're going to want to multiply that times a3, square that distance, and I'm going to just do quantity of two again because 
that area times its distance squared is exactly the same as area four times d four squared. So I'll just do that, put a two there. All right, moment of inertia about the centroidal x-axis equals. I'm gonna factor the two out because that's common to each term. One, two, three right there. And let's start kind of plugging and chugging. So the moment of inertia of shape one about its own centroidal axis, that is the moment of inertia of a rectangle. And this is one to memorize. It's gonna be B H cubed over 12. And the term that you cube is the one that is perpendicular to the axis of interest. Our axis of interest is that horizontal line right there. So our base is going to be parallel to that line, that's 50. Our height is going to be perpendicular to that line, that's 50 plus 100 plus 50 equals 200. That is the one we want to cube and of course divide by 12. That's I1. Next term, I3. I'm going to have A. Well, let me draw the axis again. So here's component three. This worked really well a minute ago. Oh, there we go. OK, so we have a horizontal axis parallel to the x axis. We want the moment of inertia of that piece about its centroidal axis. The base is 100. The height, which is perpendicular to that axis, that's the one you want to cube. That is 50 cubed. And of course, we don't want to forget dividing by 12. BH cubed over 12 is our formula. We're on to our last term, A3D3 squared. So the area of shape 3, that's a 50 by 100. Now we need to compute d sub 3, and I'll do that down here. I'm going to choose to take this distance, which is half of the total distance. That's 100. And then subtract out this little distance right here. That one is 25. Half of 50 is 25. Okay, so that gives me 75 millimeters. Put that right there and don't forget to square it. That's a common error. Got to put this in a bubble so we'll keep it straight. All right, all of these units are in millimeters. We should get millimeters to the fourth out of this. using engineering notation, that's 125 E6 millimeters to the fourth. Okay, that's the centroidal moment of inertia about X using an additive method. We basically had to compute one, two, three non-zero terms. Now let's go on to the subtractive method. I'm going to toss another layer on this. I think I wrote, let's see, can I just remove that? I can. Oh, great. Okay, let's toss another layer on and we're going to do a subtractive method this time. So what we want to do is take this, it's not a good color, um, let's take this cross-sectional area, that'll be our solid, and then we want to subtract out our void cross-sectional area. And we can show that that one is a void by maybe just erasing part of it. So I'll make that a dashed line. That'll help us remember that that is our void. I'll give both of these shapes numbers. So our outer shape, we'll call 
element one, that's a solid. Our inner shape element two, that one is a void. Our parallel axis theorem hasn't changed. So if we want the moment of inertia about that centroidal x-axis right there, then we want to take the summation of the moments of inertia of each piece about its own centroidal x-axis, add the summation of the areas times the distance squared. When we are using a subtractive method, all you need to do is remember to put a minus sign by all of the terms that relate to our void, shape two. Okay, let's go ahead and start expanding this. And again, sometimes I use a table. This one I'm not going to. I want to get I sub 1 plus I sub 2. Okay, this one will have a negative sign, but I'll just leave it as additive for now. Plus a 1D1 squared plus a 2D2 squared. So we're already seeing advantage using a subtractive. Remember in the additive method we had four shapes, now we just have two. And we're going to see more advantages because, watch this, the center of shape two lies on the centroidal x-axis. So d2 is equal to zero. And the center of shape one lies on the centroidal axis x-axis, so d1 is equal to zero as well. So this is kind of your holy grail. All of these component areas that have a centroid that lies on the axis you're interested in, for us the x-axis, those terms go away. So now we can start to simplify this. So we're going to have 1 12th. I'm going to factor out. I'm still using that um, formula for a rectangle. Um, that's going to be bh cubed over 12. But for a square, for a square, if we just adopt the notation that L for length is the length of this, I'll call that one L sub 1, and this one is L sub 2. So if a square has lengths L all four, all four um, dimensions around, then we can just call this L to the fourth over 12, just kind of adapting our equation for moment of inertia of a rectangle into something for a square. And so now that I've got this in mind, that's why I'm factoring out the 12 over here preemptively. For I sub 1, I need L sub 1 to the fourth. For L sub 2, I need L sub 2 to the fourth. But I need to remember to subtract it because it is a void. So our final computation becomes quite simple. L sub 1 is equal to 200 to the fourth power minus L sub 2 is 100 to the fourth power. Of course, this is all millimeters to the fourth. And you'll get the same answer as before, 125 E6 millimeters to the fourth. That is the subtractive method. In this case, the subtractive method is much easier, faster, and more efficient than the additive. So in the spirit of working smarter, not harder, for this type of problem, I would use a subtractive method 100% of the time. That's the end of the video. Thanks for tuning in.